you say that the, I see and I hear you. I grasp what you are speaking. It's clear enough, but there's something dark there that is working with this resistance. And so I think we all know, at least energetically, what you are speaking about. Resistance, judgment, fear. Eh? These are coming up, and they're playing a very strong uh, tug of war. Tug of war. You see, one wants to go uh, to the self. One wants to go uh, to hell, basically. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you feel caught in that. You see. But I feel I only ever have good news for you. Not flattering news. Yeah. I'm not here to flatter you or to give you some little cheap answers, but to show you something, and that is that uh, for many people, they feel that behind the facade of their personality, you you with me on this? When I say like this, the facade means the the face that you show the world. I'm a nice person. Accept me. I'm so funny. I'm so sexy. I'm so whatever face you show, that behind the mask of this face is something sinister, dark, um, inconsistent, full of judgement. Okay. But there is behind even that uh, a deeper seeing in which both these extremes are perceived. It is very important to know this, because if you don't know this, you will not follow me. You'll feel, I don't want to go to that dark place. I've been trying to hide that dark place from everybody. I'm trying to show everyone I am nice, I'm good. But there's some darkness, I don't want to show anyone that, because they will reject me, they will push me away. This identity that plays like that, eh, that also is not you. The first one is not you also. The nice person, hello, how are you? Very nice, yes, very good. This is not you. Hmm? It is maybe our act, our behavior. And you can perhaps be genuinely quite nice and very liking uh, people and so on. And that may be part of it, but it's not the whole thing. And the one underneath, apparently, that is trying to hide and not show not to show you the underwears. Hmm. This one also is not to also you. It's not the ultimate truth. But unfortunately, our identity is living somewhere between these two polarities. It is it, there's a sense in which we believe who we are moves between these two these two polarities, you see? Hmm? And that outside of what of that you don't know anything. Your world exists in this in this hmm, place. Hmm? So what else could I be talking about? You have no way to recognize anything more than what is you have been experiencing. This is what seems to happen. We believe very much in the identity that is shaped out of conditioning and belief. We believe it to be a fact. We never question whether it is possible that it is a fiction, not a fact. Because it seems as though this identity is flowing through your veins. The energy is breathing through your lungs. That it is closer than intimacy. And yet, you are here to find out if that is true. Because as long as you believe this, you will protect the one you are suffering from. You will not feel you have an option. You will try to improve the character, rather than to transcend it. If you say, I understand, I understand what you say, but there is a density in the identity, and it seems like it's though 
you have been advised or appointed to let's leave all of that aside. Something believes it can or tries, but the result is superficial, you say. Why does it not have such power? Hmm? I try to leave it aside, you see, but it doesn't seem to have any power. Why has no power? Let me ask you, who is the one who is trying to leave it aside? Let's take a look. As we begin to look more closely, eh, you'll find that perhaps you seem to be understanding less. As we look more closely towards that which is perhaps the root of the sense of the problem, distractions begin to arise often. Do you feel it or not? It becomes increasingly difficult to focus on what it is all about. This is also part of the evasiveness of the ego mind. However, there is a clue in what you say. You say that it seems as though all of this stuff, the density of the person, seems all-encompassing. Yeah? What is observing that to say that? Surely there is there is some ability in you to be looking at, at that phenomenon uh, energetically, isn't it? And say, it feels as though it's filling everything. But that's just a thought and a sensation. It is not necessarily a fact as yet. I am looking at who you're taking yourself to be. A huge part of this misconception and difficulty is because I am pointing you, the light, at you, not your problem. And as yet many people don't see the significance of that. You think your problem exists apart from you. But your problem exists as something combined with who you think you are at the moment. Mm. They go together, you see? When you discover the truth of yourself, the false you, along with its problems, will go. This is very subtle, and maybe most of you will miss what I've said. But because of the insistence and persistence at looking, and the important pointing I'm sharing with you now, that the most important, what is fundamental, what is radical in what I'm pointing out, is that I am not so interested in your problem. I'm always interested in you. Who are you? Who are you presenting yourself to be? Will determine whether you are going to be free, or you will live with a sense of being bound. A problem does not exist apart from you. And I'll tell you something else. All problems are personal. All problems are for the person, and not for the self, the pure self. The mind, the psychological mind, seems to... its greatest technique is to pull you into personhood. You are not naturally a person. Naturally you are the consciousness, you are the self. But conditioning and divine intention was that, as soon as the consciousness manifested in form, it would begin to identify with the form, believing itself to be the form. And the conditioning presented to the consciousness in the form of a person, that will play a role in who you think you are, for a time. But it's been a long time. Yeah. For some beings, it's far too much time. And for others, it's not enough time. They want more and more. Each one according to the role that you must play for a bit. 
if you in your life begin to experience an interest or an urge towards awakening to the truth of who you are, that is your good fortune. Grace is, is playing a big role to stir you into awakening. Your mind did not invent this. If your mind invent this, it won't go very far. But if something inexplicable has brought this into being within you, trust it a little bit more than you do at the moment. It's here to help you to find your way home. And let me tell you something else. Home is also not apart from you. Home is not a place. Home is your own heart. Even in life as we know it now, the consciousness is giving many hints, many clues to stir a certain awakening inside the human mind. Once upon a time, when someone sent you a letter, they are written by hand, like some letters here. I have one written by hand, few written by hand. They were sent to a physical address. And if I was away from that address, I would not be able to get my letter and read it. It has happened enough times. I would have to wait until I come to that physical address. But these times now, you can have your address can be digital, isn't it? So you could be in the middle of the Amazon, and if you have got Wi-Fi, <laughs> that is your address. Your address is where you are, wherever your computer is. That's your address. Your address is not necessarily a physical place. The address of yourself, the self, the only thing worth really discovering in this life, depending upon your maturity, and that is, is you. And often, the thing most missing from your life is you. But you have to be smart to see that. We are living with a lot of picked up concepts, ideas that we inherit, even from people that love us and that we love, who have not found the truth. What is this truth that we are talking about? Is it some sacred cluster of concepts? What is truth? Is it something you can read on a piece of paper or a holy book? What is truth? Everybody say, I am searching for the truth. If you find it, in what form will it be for you? If you are searching for your glasses, when you find them, you can say, Ah, here they are, you can show. If you are searching for your children, Ah, there you are, you can ah, come, you can find them. If you are searching for a certain philosophy, you can look, and ha ha, this is the one I'm searching for. But if you're searching for the truth, how will you find it? Does it have a shape, or a size, or a colour? Is it religious? Is it transparent? Is it a Belief? Is it different from you? Well, to really know, especially the last point, is it different from you, you'll have to know who you are. Yeah. You cannot find the truth until you find you. You cannot find the truth while you yourself are a lie. Does it make a little sense? Hmm? 
Ja. But to even have a sense that presently our self-conception is a lie, that is already a kind of wisdom. There is something in you that cannot be trapped, has never been trapped. It cannot even be free, because these are merely concepts to it. It is so pure. But freedom is a good word for now. You say, I feel so trapped, because you have to rely on the senses and the mind to evaluate your, your situation. You have to rely on how you feel yeah. and how you think, on your moods, to have an assessment of how you feel. But the truth is nothing to do with how you feel. Because in the realm of feelings, feelings constantly change. One moment you're feeling absolutely beautiful, and in another few moments you're feeling a bit annoyed or irritable about something. Next you're feeling so wonderfully alive. Not a minute you're stiff bored. <laughs> Who can control? You cannot control anything. You cannot control. One man, his wife, it was his wife's birthday, and he said, Darling, you have been with me so long. And today, for your birthday, I promise you, I will not snore tonight. <laughs> Is he, can he keep this promise? Hmm? With all the best of intention? I love you so much. Tonight, I will not snore. Well, it means tonight I will not sleep, basically. Mm -hmm. You don't have that control. We like to feel we have this type of control. Yes, I will do this. I promise I will love you forever and ever. I promise I will never hurt you. I promise I will never have to say sorry to you. Tall things to say. Yeah. And we love saying things like that. We love it. Oh, darling, I'll never, never be. <laughs> we love it. But to carry it out, you cannot. Mm -hmm. Feelings come, feelings go. If the feeling come, you cannot tell it when to go. You cannot make an appointment with feelings and say, OK, you stick around for three days. You can leave on Wednesday. You have no control. So, suppose the truth was a feeling. It would come, you feel wonderful. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, my God, thank you, thank you. Oh. And then what happened? That is also going. And they say, Oh, yes, you know, the truth visited me yesterday, but it took off after 10 minutes. I mean, what to say about it? The truth cannot be a feeling. Then what can it be then? Because we love feelings. We love them, they feel more intimate than thoughts. So I feel so good. I feel it deep inside my soul. These are feelings. Has any feeling ever come and not go? Everything that come, go. Okay. So it cannot be a measure of truth. Belief. You believe something. I believe in this. I believe in this. Hmm? But things will challenge your belief. And what you'll do is fight. You will send people away. Don't come. I don't want to speak to you because you challenge my belief. Hmm. Belief has to be converted into experience. And every experience has a beginning and an end. <laughs> there is something in which experience is itself experienced. And you know what? 
you are there. You are there to watch the lies and the truth, the comings and the goings of everything. Maybe you don't want to be. Maybe something says, I don't want to be so much there that I am unaffected. I want to be affected. You see? There's a feeling inside. No, I want life. I want to be passionate about life. I don't want to simply be aware. I want to be passionate. I want to participate. You see? Why? Because we love experiencing. Every part of experiencing, the bitter and the sweet, the ups and downs. We love the appointments and the disappointments. We love the smooth and we love the rough. Is it love we love or the addiction? success and the failures, huh? Is it love or is it addiction? Huh? Is it love or is it addiction to the experience? I think we are addicted actually. <laughs> but Feels we like, like to say addiction. we love. Yeah. Huh? To me, it it's feels both. like addiction. It's a bit of both. No. Not everybody suffers from this. <laughs> Some people say, I am tired of experiencing. Have you ever met anyone who say, I am tired of experiencing? Maybe, maybe one of you are tired of experiencing. Or just maybe tired at the moment. <laughs> because that can be part of it too. Like right now, enough. But only right now. So something is in this, and we are meant to experience. The senses are there to experience, mind is there in order to be experiencing. And all of this I find no fault in it by itself. We find fault in it because we have a lower concept of who we are. We have limited our identity to merely body mind functioning. Yeah. And the body mind functioning is not consistent. It says one thing one moment and felt the contrary thing the next moment. It cannot, it, it is itself. Your identity is relative, yet it wants to behave as though it is absolute. Something that is not possible. So, the personality, personal identity, cannot be your ultimate truth. It is always fluctuating, unsteady by nature inconsistent. So as long as it persists that we identify ourselves personally, to that extent we will feel the waves, the rock and roll of life. And we may think, Oh, I love it, I love it. But even that is really not true. We are addicted to it. We love and hate it. It is part of it. But what it is, is that we are attached to experiencing. We love it. What about sleep? If your name is John, you can only be consciously John for what? 18 hours a day maybe? Because when deep sleep comes, you are not John. Even if your beloved was calling you, John, wake up. No John is there. Unless you can shake them into awakening, you are not John. Who are you? And yet, maybe for eight hours, ten hours, you sleep, oblivious to any identity. And you love sleep. Or not? You love sleep. We spend good money to buy the best bed to forget about everything, including yourself. You have nothing, no story to tell. I'm not talking about dream now, actually. I'm talking about dead sleep. In fact, you should not wish anybody sweet dreams. Sweet dreams mean you are not sleeping. You are still mentally active. You are going to wake up tired. A dead sleep means lights out, shop shut. Okay? Like this, you wake up refreshed. 
like you've been on holiday, refreshed. Okay? For eight hours or so, no experience, no emails, no Facebook, no dialogues. And every night, you would do the same thing. You ever get bored of sleep? What is the big deal about sleep? Is sleep also an experience or not? Huh? Basic need. It's a basic need and we need it. But do we enjoy? Mm -hmm. You go to bed, your babies with you, your children with you, your parents with you. Hmm? But in deep sleep, they're not there. Even you, the one who has a life and a story and a history, a biography, you're not there. Yet something is there. Yet you are there. But not in that way. Who is it is there in deep sleep? And is the one who was sleeping, is that one here now? I want to show you this one. You don't pay attention for a few moments to whatever is going on in your head from any region of time. Hmm? You're aware thoughts are wanting to play. Sensations are there in the body. The senses are functioning. The sense of time, sense of change, all of that. Yet you don't have to do anything about that. You don't have to be juggling time or causing things to change. Right as you are, you are aware that they are moving by themselves. Hmm? Who are you here? Where is your place in all of this? You may say that you are merely witnessing this. You are aware of it. You are aware of the sense of change. You are aware of the feeling, the temperature of your body, the, the emotions, any kind of nervousness or tiredness. You are aware of the feeling of feeling a bit lost or confused. But they are just sensations, and they come and go. They all can come and go. But all of them are watched from some place. That which watches them, does that come and go? First of all, are you aware that there is a stationary, stable place from where all the traffic of emotions and sensations are observed to be coming and going? Are you aware of this or not? That which is aware, is it different from you? I. It is you. Without allowing any judgments to be formed around this sense of I-ness. Simply resting in this I-sense without creating any story. The place from where seeing is being seen. Even the function of perception is being seen. Do you feel bound? Again, from the place, without moving to the left or the right, you can move left or right, doesn't matter. Hmm? But without having to move to left or right, or to make any conclusion, or to do anything at all, you observe all sensations that arise inside your body and mind. You observe the movement of people and the wind and 
every sensation that arises in consciousness, you perceive without having to do anything about it. Is true or not? Yes. Do they depend on you? Well, in order to be perceived, you must say that if you don't perceive them, experientially they don't happen for you. Can we say like this? Uh. Yes. If you don't perceive them, experientially they are not recorded in your consciousness as ever happening. Yes. You or that which is perceiving everything. Let's turn to the dynamic side, where there is the breath, and there is movement, and there is senses and sensation, and so on. Hmm? They are manifesting, they are playing by themselves. Hmm? And yet, without the perceiving of them, which arises in this place that you speak, you are discovering. Hmm? It is the birthplace of all sensation, of all movement. From the very act of perceiving, everything is arising from that. Yet it is not arising. It cannot get smaller or bigger. Can you confirm? Does it have any conflict with the dynamic expression of life, with the breath and with form and movement? This space that she is referring to and is more than just space. It is more than just space. It is not this just space. It is more than space. But it is not a thing. It gives space to space. Yeah. This you must find in you. This you must find in you, as you. It will feel as though there is you and it. How do you perceive? What is your place there? Are you floating in that space? or? In this experience, there are not many people who are going to understand you. Maybe your parents will not understand you. Your friends, your husband or wife may not understand you. It's OK. You must know this. You don't even have to talk about it. Because in deeply confirming yourself as this, beyond merely the concept that you are this, then even if you could not speak, your presence will speak. It will communicate something from this. This innerness, this isness. And you are going to love it more and more. You are going to love it until all separations, all divisions are lost. And this is the one love that can never betray you. Because it is synonymous with you. Love is like your perfume. Peace is like your perfume. Silence is like your perfume. But the flower from which they come, no one can touch. Not even you. Mm-hmm. 